Hello there. Well, I previously looked at how it's possible to get National Grid power data from a back-end web server and from a front-end website. It's also possible to get gas data out from National Grid as well. In many ways, their reporting of UK gas is richer than it is for UK power. So I thought I'd spend the next 10-15 minutes just throw, throwing some options available for you to get gas data out and also then how we can do some Python uh, code around querying their back-end server. So there are three main mechanisms or methods to which you get gas data from National Grid. The easiest is their marketinformation.natgrid.co.uk website which I have in front of me here um, and this shows at high level you've got system information forecasts, uh, supply and demands, line packs, uh, price information and so on and so forth and this is a, a nice high level view you can query the data um, so if I want to see price information for example um, I get a chart back in this case uh, nine months or so gas data I guess price data uh, but you can see it's not interactive so I could save the chart but I couldn't really quantify um, or examine any information uh, that makes it up but whoops but it does have um, a fair amount of useful information on there the second approach is to head over the report explorer which allows us to drill down into some of these underlying data items um, and to query them by day and get say a CSV or an XML object back from it. So if I wanted to say look at uh, exit capacities for a particular asset over a month I could drill into that asset uh, run the reports by varying the gas day on here uh, run it 30 odd times and I could then combine that return data set into one, uh, one file um, and then do some analysis on that, uh, use it for some modeling requirements, or whatever it may be, um, which is fine, but again, it's a slight hassle because we have a large number of uh, data items. Um, if, I'm, if I wanted to get all these price information out, I'm looking at nine months of queries I'm going to be running, which isn't ideal. There's a third approach, which is the one which we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at today, which is to use their API to um, query, construct a query um, and then to process the, re the response back. So head over to uh, this rather unwieldy URL up here but you can either search for online or just head over to this URL directly. Um, and in there you'll find the information that relates to National Grid's API. There's a data item list. I'm recording this as of March 2016 so obviously this may well have changed if you're uh, watching this a fair way in the future. Um, there's some guidance information and some web service uh, sample files and so on and so forth. Um, the basic mechanism is you construct the XML uh, object, you pass this through to their SOAP server, it responds back uh, with the information um, you've requested again in an XML format. Of most use to you probably is to pull out first of all this API data items list. It's a Excel file and it's, uh, it contains all of the individual data items that the API can provide and respond to along with the frequency of publish, publication time and some various other little metrics there about the units and so on and so forth. So there's a high level category and within these capacities, uh, within these categories are the individual data items. These are unique data items and as we'll see in a bit they are there how you query for their individual um, items. So for example if I wanted to um, find uh, price information um, I could come up with a category uh, set price and there are this number of data items which I can uh, request um, by their frequency of publish um, and their publication time. Um, so obviously if you wanted to get uh, a SMP um, then there's no point querying it uh, for 11 if you want to be a day because it's published at midday so quick query after midday. So um, with that in mind let's head over to IPython. I've constructed a little uh, IPython notebook here which I'll again make available in the download which is going to cover uh, some of the information um, along with a worked example just to show the code in action. So we need to construct an object which has three elements. There's the underlying data URL, so that's where essentially the SOAP server, think of it as the database lives. Uh, we then need to pass in the headers object relating to the 
content type both the URL and the headers are eventually we define them once and that's it set and forget um, and they also have a data component which is the main object which we're going to pass in our variables to um, to query so um, I just define the URL and the headers as simple objects like this as just strings fundamentally and a, a dictionary objects for the headers again the URL may will change in the future just update as, as required the data component, however, um, has this main structure, so the high-level structure. So we've got some header information, um, you kind of tag, tag structure you'd expect from an XML object. The request object is the item to which we're going to pass in our variables. So while the documentation API document has all this listed at a very high level, um, you can pass in latest flag two flags, so it may be that you we're requesting latest flow information rather than um, a summary data item. So if I wanted to see latest items of gas flows from a storage asset, for example, I only want the latest information, so I'd put yes here rather than no. Um, because the examples I'm giving in our our code today, we're just going to extract out some range data. Um, I put no for the latest flag on there. Applicable for well, it can be that you're going to get data which is uh, forecasted data, so it's not applicable for today. It's applicable for a point in time, uh, say D plus seven or D plus two, whatever it might be. So you'd vary that Y or no flag depending on the data you're looking at. Um, so our LNG example we're going to come on to in a moment um, is looking at. Um, uh, uh, the date to which I'm querying data out. So if I want to get energy flows for the day, so for example the 1st of January, um, I don't. I want to get a yes on there because it's for the 1st of January. To date and from date, um, self-explanatory really, I'm, if I'm looking at a date range I want it to be a start date and an end date. Uh, date type, or date type I should say, um, because the gas day isn't based on the calendar of the day, uh, so it's not midnight to midnight, it's 0500 um, to 0459, um, I need to define if the data I want back is by gas day, so passing gas day, or it's not. So that's just the uh, date type um, variable we can pass in. And then I want to then pass in the actual objects I want to get back. So if I head over to my, turn back to my list here, each of these data items is unique, so I can pass in the string of this data item, so uh, this highest SAP in the last 18 months. I would pass that into the data item. So, building a real world example for LNG stock for January. So, I want to get LNG stock levels for UK LNG stock levels for 1st of January to the 31st of January. So, again, I've got the same item structure as I have in the previous window, but in my request object now, I'm passing in uh, latest like no because I want them for a day. Uh, click off to the day yes, so each integral day start date uh, or two date is from the 1st of January uh, 2016 to the 31st of January 2016 by gas day and then just LNG stock level so that's my single uh, item that I want to get back. Now as we saw earlier on with 13,000 odd items it's going to be slightly uh, code heavy to either produce code or query 13,000 times so we are able to pass into this uh, publication object as the name suggests a list so if I wanted to get this esoteric combination of energy stock levels uh, nomination allocations demand forecast and entry capacities then I would just append them into my list here so the uh, list would just build up by each item um, again in my example for the prices I could just enter them each of these items to here and build an object which returned all of the price data So if I were to query simply for energy stock and energy capacity, so this would then be energy capacity, it's a two entry um, list, I get the XML object back and into this we can see that the, our data item is defined in, in this publication object name and there's my energy stock level, there's my energy capacity and then in the object data between the various tags, so applicable at, applicable for, value, generated timestamp, quality indicator, substituted and created, are the various information we want, or most useful 
use so there's no for us uh, depending on the data type um, is the applicable for so that's when the data is applicable for obviously first gen second gen third gen so on the value associated with that data um, and then I may want to know about if the data is substituted so it can be that it's been revisions or updates the data um, that would be a Y or N flag depending on that again we can see exactly the same data structure for each object so this is why if you pass into the uh, list a variety of different types some which may have different units so might be say for example price fence per therm and a flow rate um, the object can be processed um, uh, as one on the point of return because they're basically defined in the same structure so in this case my value would be uh, pence per therm the other value might be a uh, flow rate but because there's no units here and the structure is identical you can process them on mass so it's all very well uh, so I whittle on here but let's have a look at building some real code um, to actually generate the object so I've got a Python object here, uh, a bit of code, so I'm using the request library, pandas, because I want to use the data, pandas data frame from this, and my XML library choice is LXML to process the returned object. So I've got a function, which I've just knocked up, um, where I pass into it the to date, the from date, and the date type. Obviously, depending on your needs, feel free to vary this, you know, you might want to pass in different um, object names, which is probably as a list or such like. Um, I've got the same structure, so there's my def defined my headers, uh, my URL, the main body, um, as you saw earlier on here, so I just define the various terms that I want to pass in. Uh, I get an object back, uh, and then I pass the content of this uh, responded object, responded, this response object from requests uh, back into my element tree here uh, from the LXML. Uh, you can see just the high level that I've defined uh, February to mid-March as my data range and um, I've got a data a pandas data frame just to contain the objects and then I loop through the responded objects um, each day's worth of XML return just defining and picking out the various information I want processing and defining various types so the date time objects for the uh, date times and the values and the floats and so on for the uh, data objects so you run this through and we get a data item, I've just put this head on here so you can see, in fact just to show it's real um, so I get a month and a half, so six weeks worth of LNG data um, in a nicely constructed and formed pandas data frame to which I could send off to a backend database, to a CSV file, all the other things you can do with pandas at a high level I could uh, plot it as a nice chart um, uh, so we can see that there I can also, as I said, pull in uh, various items and queries. So, if I wanted to extract um, all LNG data, so we can see from the uh, the API documentation that uh, LNG has five um, data items. I can then just append these as additional items into my object name list, as I sort of demonstrated earlier on, um, and get an object back which contains LNG data for, in this case, um, simply um, a couple of days, but obviously date range can vary as we saw earlier on. So the code is exactly the same, um, I've, I've hard coded these just for the demonstration, um, but the rest of the code is identical to processing uh, the responded object, and from that I get a nice little constructed data frame again which contains uh, all the information I want uh, for the days and data that I've requested. There we go. So hopefully that uh, in sort of 15 minutes is a high level overview and introduction to the National Grid Reporting um, Services um, along with a bit of code and give you a few ideas how you can use their API uh, effectively um, and yes if you've got any questions, any queries, uh, any observations or uh, follow up uh, feel, free, feel free to drop me a line um, or head over to my website which is ngianalyst.co.uk um, and I'll see if you're happy to help you on there. Alright, thank you once again uh, and all the best.